We understand that the growth, development, and maintenance are the important characteristics of multicellular organisms. And these characteristics depend not only on cell divisions, but also on cell deaths. For example, the size of a tissue is maintained. This is because of the fact that, the cells die at the same rate, as they are produced. Therefore, cell death is, important. Let's look at some prominent examples where, cell death plays significant roles. The first example is where, cell death helps to determine the, size and shape of limbs in mammals. At the early stage of development, the mammalian embryos have, webbed fingers and toes. As you can see here, this image, represents the embryonic region that will develop into fingers. The region is indistinct and, without any space between tissues that, will become the fingers. Later, during development and morphogenesis, the cells that make up the webbing die. So, we can say that, cell death plays an important role in, sculpting human hands and feet during embryonic development. Similarly, cell death is important in, shaping tissues and organs during embryonic development. The second example is, the tadpole's tail. We all generally believe that, when a tadpole turns into a frog, the tadpole's tail simply falls off, as in case of lizards. But, it is not true. What actually happens is that, each cell in the tadpole's tail undergoes cell death in such a manner, that allows all the proteins, lipids and nucleotides to be reused. Let's look at one more example. We all come across infection in our lives. And we know that, during infection the white blood cell count increases. But, when the infection is over or cured, what happens to the extra white blood cells in the body? These extra white blood cells also undergo cell death. Besides these examples, cells also die when they become damaged or infected. This is important because, if not removed, such cells can be a threat of the health of the organism. Now, the cell death in all these examples we are talking about, is known as apoptosis. Apoptosis is also known as, programmed cell death. It is unique to animals. In adult humans, apoptosis occurs continually. It has been estimated that 10 to the power 10 to 10 to the power 11 cells in the adult body, die every day by apoptosis. Here, we can ask, how apoptosis is different from cell deaths due to injury? Let's understand this. The first difference is that, cell deaths due to injury are, accidental. But, apoptosis is planned. Cells that die due to damage from external injury, typically swell and burst. And, because of this, their content is released into the extracellular fluid. This often results in the induction of inflammation. The term used for this type of cell death is, necrosis. Here the immune system has to come in action and, the surrounding damaged tissues must be repaired and replaced. On the other hand, cell undergoing apoptosis shrivel or contract and shrink. Their remains are taken up by surrounding scavenger cells such as macrophages. Thus apoptosis generally does not elicit an immune response. Now, let's understand how apoptosis is related to cancer. There are cells in which, DNA get damaged and this genomic damage is irreparable. If such cells survived in the body, they can undergo and regulated cell division. And further, if not eliminated from the body they can result in the development of cancer. Apoptosis is a major mechanism to eliminate cells in which DNA is damaged, organelles are stressed and cancer genes are overexpressed. It is important to note that the evasion of apoptosis is one important hallmark of cancer. Let's now quickly understand what actually happens to a cell during apoptosis. 
a cell gets triggered to undergo apoptosis. And origin of this trigger can outside of the cell, such as certain cytokines released from other cells. Or it can be inside of the cell, such as damaged DNA. Once a cell is destined to undergo apoptosis, the following course of events takes place. First, the cell's DNA segregates near the periphery of the nucleus. And the volume of the cytoplasm decreases. As a result, the cell shrinks and chromatin also condenses. In the next step, the cell begins to produce small bubble-like cytoplasmic extension known as blebs. Thereafter, cells' DNA is cleaved at regular intervals by endonucleuses. The nucleus and cytoplasm begin to fragment. Eventually, the cell is dismantled into small pieces called apoptotic bodies. These apoptotic bodies are engulfed by nearby cells such as macrophages via phagocytosis. So, in this video lecture, we understood that the process of apoptosis involves the packaging of dying cells into fragments that are easily eliminated by phagocytes. This whole process ensures that the normal function of surrounding tissues is not disturbed. Thus, death by apoptosis is a neat and orderly process.